Today, I'm going to be showing you how to remove an engine from a 2008 Mazda Speed 3. This Mazda began showing signs of engine failure and rather than rebuilding the engine, replacing was chosen as a far more efficient option for us where we could just pull the engine out and put a new one in within the weekend and there was no time in between where we were having to rebuild. I highly recommend replacing over rebuilding as long as you can find an engine that for sure runs. We will first start out by putting a jack under the car and making sure the handbrake is on, we'll go ahead and jack up both sides. Once both tires are off the ground, we'll put jack stands under these points on the subframe, ensuring that we can safely get under the vehicle. Once properly supported, remove your wheels and find a 1 and 1 quarter inch or 32 millimeter socket to remove the axle nut. We used impact tools so it was easy with the car in the air. You may need to do this with the wheels on and the car touching the ground if you do not have access to air tools. Once the axle nut is removed, you will need a 14mm socket to remove the sway bar link. You may be able to go without doing this, but we found it easier to go ahead and remove it. Next, you will use the same socket to remove the nut holding on the tie rod end. Removing the tie rod end from the knuckle may require some persuasion from a big hammer. If this is the case, be sure to put the nut back on the threads as you see here to prevent damage to it. Removing the lower ball joint nut requires the same 14mm socket. To prevent the bolt from spinning, you may need a wrench holding the bolt head on the other side. Remember, this bolt acts as a pin and will need to be removed from the knuckle before attempting to pull the ball joint out of the knuckle. You will next need a chisel or a flathead screwdriver to wedge the knuckle open to make the ball joint removal easier. To actually remove the ball joint from the knuckle, you may have to get creative. Here are some of the methods we use to free it from the knuckle. Once removed, you can celebrate. With the knuckle free from the lower ball joint and the tie rod, you can work on pulling the axle from the hub assembly. When it came time to remove the axles from the transmission, they didn't seem to want to cooperate too well. So we went another route, removing the bumper brace and core support, which allowed us to be able to leave the axles in during the swap. The first step in doing this is draining all the coolant from the radiator by unscrewing the plug in the lower driver's side end of the radiator. Once drained, you can use a set of pliers to remove these hose clamps shown in the highlighted areas. You can choose to either disconnect these hoses directly from the radiator or from the engine. I chose from the engine since it was much easier to reach and all the hoses would come off when we pulled the core support off with the radiator. Next, work on disconnecting the harness from the cooling fans and then the clips holding the harness to the top of the radiator. It's hard to see underneath the power steering reservoir, but there's also a ground bolted to the body that must be removed as well. If you are like most Mazda Speed 3 owners, your bumper will be trying to fall off on its own. If this is not the case for you though, feel free to use this diagram to aid in its removal. Now you will want to remove both headlights by removing the two bolts pictured at the top middle, the bottom right, a clip at the top right, and also I believe there was a bolt holding the light onto the bottom left. Next we will be removing the bumper support, labeled in this diagram as number 7. Before removal, do a walk around to the part and make sure that everything connected to it is disconnected. Once you are assured it is free of attachments, remove the 8 bolts holding it to the frame rails, highlighted in the picture. At this point, and even before now, it would be a good idea to remove the battery. Luckily, everything highlighted here can be removed using a 10mm socket or wrench. Once the battery is removed, you should remove the PCM connectors. 
This can easily be done by putting a flathead in between the gray part and the white release of the connector. With the flathead in between them, gently pull up on the white release to unplug the connector from the PCM. After removal of the PCM connectors, there will still be one major connector left on the engine's main harness, and this will be found within the fuse box next to the battery. To remove it, use a flathead to push back this small black tab. While holding the tab back, pull up on the blue release to remove the connector from the fuse box. Next, the battery box will be removed. With the battery out and the PCM connectors disconnected, this is an easy task that just requires a 10mm socket. With the battery box out of the way, we can work on removal of the fuel feed and return lines. While wiggling gently, place a flathead behind the blue retainer to release the fuel line from its hard line. There may be pressure depending on how long it took you to get to this point, so be careful not to spray fuel on yourself when the line is removed. Next, you'll need to remove the shift linkages. They are easily popped off by using a flathead screwdriver. Just place the screwdriver underneath the linkages and pry up. They will come off and look like this. Next, we will be removing the power steering lines connected to the pump. That means the one with the red arrow pointing to it, as well as the one held on by a clamp that is seen in the bottom of the screen. One of the last things that you will do is you want to get a set of pliers to remove the heater hoses going into the firewall. Once they are removed, look around the engine for anything that may still be connected, such as a clutch line or an O2 sensor, and prepare to support the engine using a chain and a cherry picker. Next, you'll want to remove the downpipe, which is held on by these five fasteners. With the chain still supporting the engine, remove the following fasteners that hold the engine and transmission to the mounts. Now you may actually be able to get around this, but we had to remove this bracket because it would hit on the frame rail when we went to pull the engine out. Once the mounts are removed, you can slowly begin pulling the engine forward. If you feel any resistance, stop and inspect around the engine and make sure it is not still attached to something. Hey, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If this video helped you out, let me know by leaving a like. If not, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what you guys think and what I could have done better. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm glad to help. I try to help out as much as possible. Just most of all, let me know what you guys think. And thanks for watching.